Chapter 38. The restaurant wasn't much, really. A jumble of tables full of younger pilots and cadets, dim lighting, a band playing hand drums in the corner for some music. FM pulled me to a table where Arturo sat with his arm around a girl I didn't recognize, short hair, brown skin. Kimmelin sat primly at the table with a very large, very purple drink in front of her. Next to her was Ned. Ned. I hadn't seen him in weeks. Ever since that night on the launch pad, he had on trousers and a button-up shirt, and a jacket was draped across the back of the chair. It was strange to see him in street clothes, especially next to Arturo, who had on his cadet's jumpsuit. I could hear Ned's easygoing voice over the hum of other chatter in the room. I never said I was that kind of stupid. I'm the other kind of stupid. You know, likable stupid. Arturo rolled his eyes, but the girl next to him leaned forward. Ned, she said, stupid is stupid. No, it's not. You're talking to an expert. I... Guys, FM interrupted, presenting me with hands raised in to the side. Look who I found slinking around the base. She was moping about how she can't shoot anything for a few days. Ned thumbed, thumbed toward FM. See, she's the other kind of stupid. FM smacked him on the back of the head, and he grinned. Then he stood and grabbed me in a suffocating bear hug. Good to see you, Spin. Order something to eat. Arturo's pain. I am. You're rich. So are you. I'm the other kind of rich, the poor kind. Oh, for the saint's sake, Arturo said. Don't use the saint's name in vain, Kimmelin said. You do all the time. I'm religious. You're not, so it's okay for me. Ned grinned, using his foot to hook a chair from the next table over, then pull it, pulling it to us. He waved for me to sit down. I did so, hesitant. I was still distracted by the recording in my jumpsuit pocket. At the same time, seeing Ned and Kimmelin made me feel warm. This was something I needed. <clears throat> so I tried to forget about the recording for now. Spin, this is Bryn. Arturo said, pointing to the girl sitting close, very close to him. A friend from before flight school. I honestly don't know how you all suffer him, she said. He pretended to know everything before he became a pilot. He must be impossible now. He mock punched her lightly on the shoulder, smiling. Yes, it was clear that this was an established relationship. How had I never known that Arturo was attached? I would know, I thought, if I ever got to spend any time outside of class with the rest of them. A few seconds later, FM set something purple and bubbling in front of me, along with a basket of fried algae strips. She settled into her own seat and tossed a pouch to Kimmelin. Found your necklace, she said, under your bed. Thank you, dear, Kimmelin said, opening it and checking inside. I did pitch something of a fit when I left, didn't I? Are you guys coming back to the BDF, I asked? Are we going to talk to Cobb? They need pilots. Maybe we could get them in to take you back. Ned and Kimmelin shared a look. Then Ned took a long drink. No, he said, Cobb said most of the class would wash out, so they're expecting this, right? They're not going to take us, and I'm not sure I would, could do that to my mother after silence. Conversation at the table died. I might not be coming back, but at least I made cadet, Kimmelin said, perking up. My parents are proud, and the Gunners and Bountiful are full of chatter about me. But, I mean, flying, I said, although I knew I should leave well enough alone. We aren't like you, Spin, Ned said. Flying was great. I'd go back up in a heartbeat. But something about the BDF, the culture, the throwing cadets into battle, the desperation. FM gave him two thumbs up. Kimmelin just looked down at her lap. She was probably thinking what I was. The DDF had to be a reason to be desperate. When the cadets flew, it wasn't only for practice or even because the DDF was callous with their lives. It was because we needed more pilots in the air, however inexperienced. Growing up in Ignis, I'd known that the fight against the Krell was a valiant, dangerous endeavor. But before coming to Alta, I'd never realized quite how close to the edge we were. I kept my mouth shut, though, because I didn't want to depress everyone. The conversation turned to some big game yesterday. Pearl's old team had won. Ned raised his glass, and the others did as well, so I joined in. I took a sip of my purple drink and almost spat it out. It was so sweet. I covered it up by trying out one of the fries. My mouth exploded with flavor, and I froze, eyes wide. I practically melted into a puddle. I'd had fried algae before, but it had been nowhere near as good as this. What were those spices? Spin, Arturo asked. You look like someone just stepped on your toe. I held up a fry, fingers trembling. So good. She's been living on rats for the last few months, FM pointed out. Her taste buds are undergoing serious atrophy. You have such a unique way with words, FM, Kimmelin noted. Not like anything I've heard. How many of these can I have, I asked. I got the whole basket for you, FM said. Arturo is paying, after all. I started stuffing them into my mouth, comically, by intention. But honestly, I wanted to get as much down as I could before I woke up or someone kicked me out of here or something exploded. Bryn laughed. She's aggressive. You have no idea, Arturo said, smiling as she played with the curl of his hair. 
Scud, it was criminal how little I knew about my flight mates. Where's Jorgen, I asked, talking around bits of food, bites of food. He wouldn't want to come, Ned said. Too important for us. You didn't even invite him, I asked. Nah, Arturo said. But isn't he your friend? <laughs> That's how we know he wouldn't come, Ned said. Say, how old's Cobb getting how's old Cobb getting by? Has he said any interesting curses lately? Spin gave him a bit of a black eye last we spoke, Kimmelin noted. I swallowed my mouth full of fries. I was wrong to say what I did. If you don't say what you're thinking, Kimmelin said solemnly, then it will stay in your head. You deconstructed him, FM said, raising a finger. He was relying on the very thing he was denying. I looked down at my basket, which was somehow already empty. FM swept it away and walked off to the counter, probably to get me another. I could hear the fryer and the pungent crisp smith scent in the room made me made my mouth water for more. This wasn't too expensive, was it? Did I care right now? I tried the drink again, still too sweet. FM set another basket of fries in front of me, fortunately, and I tacked them. The spices were just so good. Flavor that made my mouth wake up as if from a long slumber. The others continued to reminisce about Pearl, their voices tinged with the same pain I, pain I felt. They got it. They understood. I wasn't alone. Not here. I found myself explaining what Jorgen and I had done. They listened solemnly to the details. I should have gone with you, Arturo said. You think Cobb would let me hold her pin for a moment, if I asked, before he gives it back to her family? Bryn rubbed his arms as he looked down at the table. Rubbed his arm as he looked down at the table. Remember that time, Ned said, that she bet she could eat more algae patties than me at dinner? She ended up on the floor, FM said, wistful. On the floor, just lying there, groaning, complaining about it all night, claiming the patties were fighting in her stomach. The others laughed, but Arturo stared at his cup. He seemed hollow. He'd almost died in that battle. Hopefully the ground crew would have his ship running again by the time our leave was done. That, of course, made me think of the work Rig was doing on Imbot, and the fact that I owed him a lot. FM, I said, what do you think of smart guys? I'm already taken, Arturo said with a smile. FM rolled her eyes. Depends, how handsome are we talking? Handsome, in a reserved way. Guys, I'm already taken, Arturo said again. FM would only want to romance someone low class, Ned said, to defy the, pow defy the powers that be. A kind of star-crossed impossible love is the only love FM would accept. My entire life isn't dominated by being a rebel, Ned, she said. Yeah, Ned said, what kind of drink did you get? I noticed for the first time that her drink was orange, while everyone else was having purple. She rolled her eyes again. You are stupid. The right kind? The annoying kind? I'll take it. Their banter continued, and I sat back, enjoying my fries, until Bryn got up to use the restroom. With her gone, it was just our flight, and I found myself itching to say something to them, now that we were away from the DDF headquarters, where I always felt like someone was watching. Can we talk about something? I finally asked, interrupting a story Ned was telling. I keep thinking about the questions Arturo brought up in class that one time. Isn't it weird that we can fight an enemy for 80 years and have only a vague idea what they look like? Kimmelin nodded. How convenient is it that the Krell never commit more than a maximum of 100 fighters to an individual assault? The defense platforms up in the debris field explain a lot of why we're still alive down here, but this question bothers me. Couldn't the Krell send twice as many and overwhelm us? It's suspicious, FM said, very. You'd say that no matter what, Ned said. And in this case, do you disagree, FM asked? He didn't reply. We can't be the only ones who've asked these questions, right? I said. So, does the DDF really not know the answers, or are they hiding them? Like they were hiding the truth about my father. Okay, to play devil's advocate, Arturo said. Perhaps they don't, just don't share that sort of intel with cadets and non-combatants. I know you don't like the Admiral spin, with good reason. But her record is excellent, and she has some very good advisors. And yet, we're losing, I said, pulling my seat closer to the table, trying to speak quietly. You all know we are. The Krell are going to eventually get us. The others fell silent, and Arturo glanced around, checking to see if any other occupied tables were close enough to hear us. They don't want us asking these questions, Kimmelin said. Remember that time at dinner when Arturo was talking? How the passing officer told him to shut up? Everyone but Cobb shuts down any conversation about the hard questions. They need meatheads, FM added, pilots who blindly do what they are told and never express an ounce of originality, compassion, or soul. Arturo's girlfriend reappeared, winding her way back to our table. I leaned in closer. Just think about it, I said quietly, because I am. I felt it in my pocket and the data chip tucked inside. The conversation turned to lighter topics, but FM looked at me and smiled, a twinkle in her eyes, as if she was proud of my questions. She seemed to think I'd always been some brainwashed and defiant zombie, 
but she didn't know me, didn't know how I'd lived most of my life outside their society, wandering the tunnels and scavenging. If anything, I would want Defiance to be more brave, more heroic, more like in Grand Grand Stories. But I supposed that she and I could agree on one thing in this area. The current leadership at the DDF left something to be desired. Let I let FM, well, Arturo, buy me a third basket of fries, and then I eventually excused myself. I had enjoyed the meal with them, but there was something else I needed to do. It was time to find some answers.